Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Meghnad. In this module, we learn about how to write a simple for loop and where exactly we need a write for loop. And I'll give some examples. And I also explain what are the different ways you can write a for loop. So this is a really important concept. And please practice it when you're seeing the video. And as and when I explain some topic, please practice it and see the output so that you'll get confidence in writing for loop. With that, let's get started. Now, I just open Eclipse ID now. Now I'm going to create a project for this lesson. Now this is lesson 18. So what I'll do now, file new Java, file new project. I'll select Java project here, click on next. And I'll write here lesson 18 project and click next. And the module info.java, I don't need it. Click on finish. Now, okay, we just opened lesson 18 project we just created. And the first thing that we used to do is create a package, file new package. So why I'm explaining multiple times is so that I want you to be comfortable uh, so that I'm explaining this um, process uh, in some videos. So now I'll write here lesson 18 package. And I have to write here class number we have to write in capital case. So create a class. I'll write here lesson 18. Now main method, public static void main. So when I check this checkbox, it'll create that. Now what we'll do is I'll just write enter and um, just put enter here so that it's aligned and delete. Uh, sorry, let me delete this page here and done. Now, now what we'll do is let's take I have a requirement to print hello five times. So I want to print hello five times. So what we do if you don't have a for loop, we write like this SYSO and write here hello. And let me copy this. One, two, three. Four, five. So, but this is not a good code. When you repeat something which is same, now let's run the code now. And you will see here, hello is printed five times. But when you write some code, in case in future, if I want to change hello to hi, so I'll end up in changing all the places. I have to change hi here, and I have to change here, I have to change here, I have to change here, I have to change here. So this is called duplicate code. So in IT software projects, you always try to avoid uh, duplicate code as much as possible. Now I want to print high five times and this is not a best code. So the alternative for this could be you can write using a for loop. Now let's see how we can do it using a for loop. So we just take a variable, so for, so I'll write int i for i is equal to one, starting from value one. How many times we have to print i less than or equal to five? up to five, I plus plus. Now, now I have to write enter. Now I have to write SYSO, control space, and write here hi. So that's it. Now I don't have to put this five times. Now what happens now is, now let's see this. Now, how this really works is, let me try to explain you. First initialization will happen. I value becomes one, and then it'll come inside, and it'll print this hi. And okay, sorry, let me explain once again. First initialization will happen, i equal to one, and then it'll check for the condition. So condition is satisfied, yes, one less than or equal to five, it'll print high, and then it'll come here and it increases i value. So i plus plus means i value becomes two. And two less than or equal to five, yes, it'll print high, second time, and again it'll check for the condition, it'll increase i value, it'll become three now. Three less than or equal to five, yes, it'll print high, now next time i value comes here it'll come and it'll become four four less than or equal to five yes it'll print high and next time i value comes five five less than or equal to five yes it'll print high and now i value comes six and six less than or equal to five condition fails and that's it now let's try to debug the code and let's understand very clearly so how this for loop works i'll just how to put a breakpoint here just double click on i equal int i double click on this That'll add a breakpoint. Let me do this. Just a second. Now I have to double click in this for loop now. So here I cannot add because it's just a variable declaration. So I have to add a for loop here. Uh, in this line I can add a breakpoint. In line eight, let me double click on this. I just added a breakpoint. Now how to debug the code now? Let's go to run and debug Java application. Sorry, let me click on cancel. And let's do once again run and uh, debug Java application. Now click OK. 
Now uh, I just need to switch to debug mode, click on switch. Now the breakpoint came and stopped there. All of you know how to debug this. So first what I'll do now is I have to write here, um, I have to select F10, F6. So now let's go to, let's press F6 here. And it came here. So now if I move the mouse on this, you can see the value I equal to one and it just printed high. And now it came back here, I plus plus. And uh, now I value is uh, two. You can see when I move the mouse over it, I can see I value. Or you can also add a watch window there. Maybe we'll show that in the next module, uh, next after a few modules. Now I value is two now, it printed hello. Now I value becomes uh, three, it's checking the condition, it's satisfied. Now I value becomes four, move the mouse on this. You can see I value is four. Now I value is five. And uh, so the condition is satisfied. Now I value is six. Now condition will not satisfy it just came out. So you can see here when I uh, see the output window, it just printed high five times and that's how a for loop works. So so for loop first uh, initialization and then checks the condition, statements and then increment, right? So now what we'll do is uh, let's try to understand how for loop works and then we'll come back. Okay, now let's try to understand the general syntax for for loop and how to write a for loop. Now let's see this. Now first time uh, initialization will happen and then it'll check for the condition. Now once the condition is true, now it'll execute. So initialization will happen only once. Now this a value i equal to one we have written right, so that'll happen only once and then it'll check for the condition. Now once the condition is satisfied, it'll check, for, it'll execute the statements. And once the statements are executed, it'll again come back and check increment or decrement. Now again, it'll check for the condition and this will continue, this process will continue as long as this condition is satisfied. Now, now that will keep on executing this statements increment condition as long as the condition is satisfied, it'll keep on executing it. Now once the condition fails, it will stop executing it. So when condition fails, loop iteration will stop. So this is how the general for loop works. Now let's try to understand in Eclipse IDE, let's try to understand uh, simple illustrations for how to write for loop. Now we have already seen this, this loop executes five times and it'll print five times. Now what happens if I write here and if I write here S Y S O and I'm writing here hi, or I'll write here hello. Now in this case, most of the times we think that, so uh, when I value is one, it'll execute these two statements, no. So when I value is one, if you don't have flower brackets, only one statement belongs to for loop. Now, now only this statement belongs to for loop and if it print I value is one, it'll print high. Again, it'll go here. It'll print I value becomes two, it'll print high. So five times it'll print high and then it comes outside the for loop and it'll print hello one time. So remember, this statement is not inside the for loop. Even though the indentation is there like this, this statement is not inside the for loop. So the output for this is it'll print high five times and only one time it'll print hello. So let's run the code and let's see now. Uh, I will uh, click on this uh, run button. Let's click on this. Now you can see here, uh, let me show the complete output for you. So you can see here it printed high uh, five times and just one time hello. Okay, now similarly, if I really want to print both of them, if I really want to print hi, hello, hi, hello like that, so then definitely I have to put a flower bracket here and I have to close this flower brackets here. So when I write like this, both the statements belong to the for loop. Now, when i equal to one, it'll print hi, hello. When i equal to two, it'll print hi, hello. So now if I run the code now, you will see hi, hello five times. Now let's run the code now. And you can see here that if I show you the complete output, you can see here, i equal to one, i equal to three, i equal to four, i equal to five, i equal to, um, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. So five times it just printed hi, hello. Now one more thing is, let's try to understand, let me ask you one question. So int i for i is equal to one, i less than or equal to five, i plus plus. Now I'll be writing here s y s o i, and I again write here s y s o i. Now if someone asks you what is the output for this code, you have to tell very confidently, first time when i is one, first time when i is one, Again, only since we don't have flower brackets here, only this belongs to this belongs to the for loop, right? So i is equal to one, it'll print one, one, two, three, four, five. When i value becomes six, the condition fails and it'll go outside the for loop 
and here it will print 6. I repeat once again. So this loop will execute first and since we don't have flower brackets only one statement belongs to for loop. It will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When i value becomes 6, 6 less than or equal to 5 condition fails. So this will print 6. So the answer for this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from this first, for, first statement and this will execute only once which will print 6. Now let's run the code and see what's output now. Now we can see here it is actually printing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Now one very important point to note here is when you put a semicolon for a for loop. Now let's take by mistake. I have kept a semicolon for a for loop. Now it will not give any error. When you put a semicolon for a for loop, it will not give any error. But the problem is that it will loop through here itself. Now having a semicolon for a for loop means it's an empty for loop. So that means there are no statements inside for loop. So what happens when you put semicolon for a for loop? It will loop through here itself and when i value becomes 6, it will come outside. So here it will print 6 and again i value same 6, here also it print 6. Be very careful. When you, write I, when you write a semicolon for a for loop, it is not an error. It's not a compilation error. It's not an error. So it will just internally itself it will loop through multiple times and it will come outside and print here. 6 and here also it's 6. Now let's try to debug this and let's try to understand very clearly. So I'll put a breakpoint in the for loop line number 8 and double click here. I just kept a breakpoint. Click on run and select debug and now you can see the breakpoint will come and stop there. Okay. Now I have to press F6 to see how the code flow happens now. So let's see here F6. Now now if you see here it just iterated there itself multiple times and when I move the mouse on this you can see I value showing as 6. So it actually looped here itself in the same line five times and when I move the mouse on this I value showing as 6. So it came outside the for loop and I value is 6 and now you can see here it's showing as 6. Now again if I press F6 so you'll find here it'll print 6 6 and you can see the output here it showed 6 6. So, so now we just learned that having a for loop semicolon for for loop indicates that it'll iterate here itself and come outside when the condition fails and these two statements are outside the for loop. Right? Let's try to see some scenarios, some combinations in a uh, PowerPoint slide and then um, now. Now let's try to guess the output for this. So first I int i counter. For i equal to 1, i less than equal to 5, i plus plus. i counter, we just used, it's a counter, so we used i counter here. It's same like i. Now as I explained you, only one statement here belongs to, only one statement here belongs to for loop because we don't have a flower bracket. So it'll print hello five times. And when I when and this will print only one time, so total it prints six times hello. Now you'll see here. Now output is hello six times. Now what is the lesson we learned? If we don't have flower brackets for a for loop, only one statement will be considered inside for loop. Now let's see the next one. Now the same thing, and this time we have flower brackets. Now now what happens is when i i equal to one, it'll print two times hello. I equal to two, it'll print two times hello. So every time it'll print two times hello and so the output will be 10 times hello. Okay, now let's see the next possible scenario. Now, in this case, I have kept a semicolon here. So now when you keep a semicolon for a for loop, it'll just terminate the loop now. So now what happens here itself, it'll loop through and when it'll come outside, when i value becomes six, it'll come outside and it'll print hello here. So it'll print only one time hello. Okay. Now, a semicolon for a for loop is same as for loop without any statements in it. So it'll just print. Now, one last scenario is something really important which you need to understand is, let's see the next one. Now, here what we have done, I have written here int i counter. For i equal to 1, i less than or equal to 5. Instead of increment here, I have written a statement. And I'm writing here i counter plus plus. So this is something really, really important to understand. Now let's try to, most of you, most of us think that this will give a compilation error because we think that here also we have to put i plus plus and uh, we think that it will give us an error, but no, this is not an error. Let's try to understand how this really works. Let's see this. First, i values one. Now it will go here. It checks the condition and then it will come here. Now i value becomes two. Now it will go here. It will first print two. Now again it will come here. Now two less than or equal to five, yes. Now it'll become three and it'll print three. And again, it'll check here, three less than or equal to five, yes. It'll become four and it'll print four. 
Now it will come here 4 less than or equal to 5, yes. And it will become 5. Now it will print 5 here. And 5 less than or equal to 5, yes. It will become 6. And it will come here. It will print 6. Now it will go here. 6 less than or equal to 5 condition fails. So the output for this code is, I, I suggest everyone to try to understand this code. So this code will give output as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So please play the video once again, how I explained this. This is really important for you to understand. When you have a statement inside a for loop, it will not give an error. It will just execute the same process like initialization, condition check, and then, and then statements, and then it will come like this. So all of you should understand this code flow. So we normally think it will give compilation error, so it will not give the compilation error. When you say compilation error, it's wrong. So the output for this code is, it will give 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I strongly suggest everyone to try to understand this. Have a watch once again and be very clear with this. Okay, so I hope you are clear with uh, how to write a for loop. And uh, in the next modules, we see some examples of uh, real-time programs. So some programs we will see to understand for loop very clearly. So that's all for now. And please do practice it when you are uh, seeing the video. Right? Thank you and see you in the next module.